Earlier today, my daughter Andrea sent me a little text, and she said, Dad, what is your favorite Bible verse? Well, that's a toughie, because there are so many wonderful verses, but as I began to think about this, it, it, it appealed to me that uh, God does speak to us at certain times in certain ways uh, through his word, and those verses become landmarks in our journey. And I think probably one of the key verses in my life has been John 3.36. The Lord used that in helping me understand the way of salvation. It puts things in striking contrast when we read, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Now, my father used this verse. I was just a little boy, wasn't quite five years old, but he used the verse to explain that the Lord Jesus has in his hands a gift and a gavel. Uh, he is both the Savior and the judge, and he wants to give us the gift of eternal life. But if we say no to that gift, then he is going to have to use the gavel and find us guilty. And this verse illustrates those two ideas, that if we believe in the Son— we have the gift of eternal life. And if we don't believe on him, then the wrath of God abides on us. And it was so stark and clear to me, it helped me understand. And as a little child, I put my faith in the Lord. So obviously, John 3.36 is a key verse in my journey. And then when we were married, we took as our marriage verse the words of the psalmist, Psalm 34, verse 3. They're engraved inside my wife's wedding band. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. That was our desire as a couple to live our lives for the pleasure of the Lord and to exalt his name, to call people to think highly about our Lord. And, and so that's been our privilege uh, through our married life. And then when I was sent out in the service of the Lord full-time to preach the word around the world, the verse that the Lord gave me was in Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. And there it says, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak. And this was the key phrase, A word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. Now, that's a messianic prophecy concerning our Lord Jesus, but I laid claim to the same ministry that he had given me to go out with words of encouragement to those who are weary to point people to the Lord Jesus. I think probably my favorite verse for sharing with people, people that I don't know, I don't know if they're saved or lost, uh, but a great verse that I found very helpful and very adjustable are the words found in Nahum chapter 1 and verse 7. It's the verse I have on these pens. I've given away hundreds, perhaps thousands of these pens, the beautiful pen that I get from the National Pen Company, and it just exactly fits on the pen. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Tendency is when people get into times of trouble to question the goodness of the Lord. Here's a great a combination of ideas in the verse. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and then this subtle gospel message at the end, and he knows those who trust in him. That's what it means to be saved, that the Lord knows you, right? If you're not saved, he doesn't know you. Only your sins rightly introduce you to the Lord. And so if you come before the Lord someday and say, Lord, I'm this good person, uh, he says, I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Depart from me, I never knew you. And so the scripture makes a big deal of this. After you had known the Lord or after you had been known by him, he's the one who knows us. And, and to perish, according to Psalm 1, the last little verse, it, it states, that uh, the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. To perish means to be unknown by the God who knows everything and to be sent away from the God who is everywhere. 
What a terrible fate. But this verse says, the Lord knows those who are his. And then there are a couple of verses that I just love because I love the positive spirit, the positive attitude that is given to us in the word of God. You know, the Christian is the world's greatest pessimist and the world's greatest optimist because we know that in our heart, that's in our flesh, there dwells no good thing. We don't have any confidence in the flesh. And so when we talk about human beings, human beings can be monsters. We recognize that. Everyone's a sinner. Everyone's lost and hopeless and undone. And that's the one side of the equation. The other side is we can do all things through Christ. God loves the world. Christ died for the world. Whosoever will may come. And God is able to take a sinner and turn him into a saint. And so we have every confidence in the grace of God changing people's lives. No confidence in the flesh, every confidence in God. So here are two verses. One is the most positive verse in the New Testament, and the other is the most negative verse, and yet they both bring us into blessing because that's how God is. He takes curses and turns them into blessings. So here's the most positive scripture. We read this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, that is at all times, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. I'm not sure why the translators decided to change the last one from all to every, because it's exactly the same word. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you in all ways, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for all good works. Five alls right in a row. And then the most negative verse in the New Testament is found in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. And it says this, let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, and in the vernacular, the English, we read, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There are two negatives in there, never and nor. But in actual fact, in the Greek, there are five negatives. Something like, no, I will not ever leave you. No, I will never forsake you. There are five negatives in that verse. And yet, what an amazing positive consequence. The, the writer goes on to say, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So I love those two verses. Of course, there are lots of verses. There are these mega prayers in Colossians 1 and Ephesians 3. You can't get any bigger than to pray for someone that they might be filled with all the fullness of God, that they might be increasing in the knowledge of God, that they might be fruitful in every good work. I mean, everything is taken to the max there. And I love to pray that way, to pray for the saints that way, because God knows how to do that. And sometimes it has to be written over our prayer lives. You have not because you ask not. We need to pray big prayers, God-sized prayers for the people of God. So these are wonderful verses as well. My geriatric verse uh, as since I've passed the three score and 10 now, is found in Isaiah 46. And there we read, verse 4, even in your old age, I am he. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. Lots of other good old age verses about being fruitful in old age, and at evening time it shall be light. But I love this little verse talking about the fact that as we grow weaker in body, the Lord is there to carry us on in the work right to the finish line. So those are some of the verses that have meant a great deal to me. There are lots of other verses, verses that I thrill to preach, verses that I thrill to pray verses that I thrill to share with people who are struggling going through times of deep need. But these were landmark verses to me as I travel through life, and yet it's not the most significant of all the verses. 
The most significant verse, I think, in, in the scriptures is a little phrase out of Genesis 16, verse 13. When I was a little boy, um, there was a text on the wall in my bedroom, and it simply said this. These were the words of Hagar. It was the nickname that she gave the Lord after the Lord arrived just in the nick of time to save her and her little boy. And this is what she called him. She called the name of the Lord that spoke to her, Thou God seest me. All right, That was the verse that was on my wall. I hated it. I just hated it. It was like a big eyeball up there on the wall looking at me all the time. And I knew enough that I knew that in the darkest night under my bed, when no one else could see me, God could see me. It drove me crazy. I just, I, it, it made me just so creeped out at this, at this verse, thou God seest me. But you know, one day, something dramatic happened in my life. And when I came into the bedroom that evening and I looked up that text, someone had changed it. It wasn't the same text anymore. <laughs> it was like, now it said, thou God seest me. Wasn't that great? My best friend was watching over me when no one else knew I was in trouble. And I was always getting into trouble, falling out of trees and getting stuck in the mud and all sorts of things happening. When, when I was out there sinking into some mud somewhere up to the top of my boots, I knew God knew I was there. I knew there were that the Lord was ready to help me. And so the change that was wrought in that verse by the fact that before I felt like his enemy and that he was spying on me, as opposed to now that he was my friend and he was watching over me. It's the same verse. No wonder the Bible is described as a sword with two edges. It cuts both ways. It convicts and it comforts. And as I think about that, it's a little parable of life in general. Verses that maybe I used to find discomforting, I now find comforting and encouraging. Because once we get behind the words and we discover the author of the words, oh, what a difference it makes to our appreciation of Scripture. So it's kind of a foolish thing to try and come up with favorite verses, uh, but these at least are hallmark verses. These are, these are milestone verses in my life. And I just thank the Lord that my book is so rich. If I lived 10,000 years, I could keep finding new treasures and new, new pearls and new, new diamonds. As I look into the scripture, everywhere are these glorious truths. May the Lord encourage you as you think back over your life and think of those times when the Lord spoke to you and make a little memory of those and tell your children and your grandchildren of these events where God worked in your heart. And may the Lord encourage us all to be raising up those landmarks, remembering those days when God spoke to us, thou God seest me. <laughs>